All right, hello. So here's a video going over the character and sort of the project that I'm going to be sinking a currency into for the foreseeable future here in the Trials on the Ancestor League. And it is an armor stacking jug. So I would actually try to make a character like this uh, end of the last league. I didn't get to play it much and I didn't make a video of it in the end, but I really enjoyed it and I figured I wanted to get more chance to play with it. So I made another revision of the build and sort of um, revisited it this league. So this is what I've been sinking currency into. And uh, it's, uh, I think, a very cool build. So I figured I'd go over for everything that makes a tick and what I've done and because not a, lot, not a lot of people actually run Juggernaut for armor stacking so it's a bit of a hipster variant of this but I think it's kind of cool. So before we actually get into the mechanics here I'm going to say that yes obviously this current version of the build is quite high end. I've sunk pretty much every single bit of currency I've made into this build and I've been playing non-stop since the launch so um, I got some expensive stuff obviously I have a mage plot and you know all that stuff but this build actually um Unlike a lot of my other builds <laughs> that I post this channel, there actually is a budget version of this build you can put together with like 20 div or something um, that you can start fairly early on if you so wish. And I think I'm going to put together a POB of that and release maybe a video of it uh, in the future. But for now, I'm just going to go over my high-end sort of setup here, which because it's basically an aura stacker, <laughs> it still has a lot of ways to grow. So uh, I still have a lot of stuff to do with it. But uh, yeah, in the future, I probably will actually make a budget version of this and, and show it to you guys because it is totally possible to play this uh, on a lower end and, and do super fine. So what is an armor stacker? Well, an armor stacker stacks a bunch of armor, um, obviously. So if you look at our character sheet here, um, our armor, if I pop my grace here, which I have in a divine blessing setup, uh, you get 3.8 million armor. So we have a lot of armor. Now, why do you need this much armor when, you know, if fizz damage reduction caps at 90% and all that? Well, this much armor has a bunch of different upsides to it. So uh, mainly the way we're using this armor is to scale damage via the replicate dream feather sword. So this has the bottom line there of giving you 1% increased attack damage per 450 armor, and we're running two of these. This gives us 2% attack damage per 450 armor, and seeing as we have nearly 4 million armor, uh, you can imagine this gives us a lot of damage percent. Uh, it really, really scales your damage. Uh, right now, I believe uh, these swords alone give me 17,000% increased attack damage. Uh, so yes, it's uh, you get a ton of damage out of it. That's our main source of damage. So basically, all we just have an absurd amount of percent damage, which makes other sources of percent damage actually quite negligible. So the way we're scaling our damage tends to focus on on other avenues. Um, but yeah, so that's where we get our damage, and then obviously we are running Jugs, so we are getting this mini Transcendence node where it applies a portion of our armor to our elemental damage taken from hits. Uh, obviously 8% is not a huge number, but seeing as our armor number is so massive, uh, this 8% is still a um, huge amount of armor, so uh, this gives you a ton of free elemental mitigation and makes you incredibly tanky. Another really nice part about armor stacking is that you get access to the armor and energy shield mastery here, which makes armor also apply to chaos damage taken from hits, so not, not only do you get the Transcendence effect of having it applied to your elemental damage from Unbreakable, you also get it applied to your Chaos damage, which makes you incredibly tanky to almost anything. Obviously, the, the actual thing that can hurt you is degens, uh, but generally uh, anything else is, I mean, basically just does nothing to you. So how are we getting into this sort of stratospherical uh, amount of armor? Well, the core of it is that you're basically playing an aura stacker. So if, if you have ever seen aura stacker trees, uh, this will look very familiar to you. I have a bunch of voices and I have a bunch of mana reservation introspection clusters. Uh, yes, again, we are back to the aura stackers. Uh, <laughs> but yes, we're stacking Aura Effect, and then we're stacking Grace and Determination, mainly Grace. So while this build uh, may be called an armor stacker, what you're actually doing mostly is just stacking Evasion and then running uh, as high a level of Grace as you can. The reason for this is that uh, we are running the Keystone Iron Reflexes. Iron Reflexes converts all your Evasion rating to armor. What makes this so huge is that if you look at the Grace and Determination Auras, both of these have more multipliers to their relative stats. So you can see that here my Determination has a... 51% more armor multiply on it, and then the Grace has 35% more evasion rating. What this means is that if you're just scaling straight flat armor, it only gets applied to the determination and you only get the 51% more armor. However, if you scale evasion, what happens with our reflexes is that that evasion gets put into Grace and then gets that 35% more evasion rating multiplier applied to it, and then that gets converted to armor, and that armor gets fed into determination and gets the more multiplier from determination applied to it. So you're basically getting two more multipliers uh, from scaling evasion versus just one with scaling determination. So you're basically getting more bang from your buck out of just straight scaling evasion. So that's why grace is the main thing we're scaling. We have grace aura effect on our chest, on our rings, and most of the aura effect on our tree goes, obviously it scales all our auras, but we're mainly getting armor from grace. So that's a huge portion of it. And then other sources of armor, um, obviously this high-end version of the build has a mage blood, which gives you access to 
permanent uh, super juiced armor innovation flasks. Uh, so we're getting armor from those. And then we are also getting armor from our chest piece. So I'm running a grasping mail. Uh, the, the most important mod to look at here is the fractured armor is increased by overcapped fire as mod. What this means is basically if you look at your defense sheet, uh, this number right here in the parentheses, this is the number that uh, your armor gets increased by. So this chest gives you basically 629% increased global armor. Uh, so that's very strong. Now there is actually a grasping mail mod that you can get that is evasion rating is increased by overcapped cold res. And obviously, since I just explained that scaling evasion is better than armor, this would result in more armor. So this would be a more powerful mod. However, the reason uh, why I'm not running that and I'm instead running the fire as overcap is that uh, because we are running a juggernaut, uh, we are forbidden flesh and flaming the new chieftain ascendancy, notable uh, Valco Storm's Embrace, which gives you, it's like a show here, which is a bit annoying, but uh, it gives you uh, basically a free melding of the flesh. So it makes it so that your other elemental resistances are capped by your max fire resistance. Uh, so basically, if you have 90% max res in fire, uh, you also get 90% max res in coal and lightning. And it doesn't have any downsides to it like melting of the flesh does. Uh, melting of the flesh obviously gives you like minus four max res or whatever, um, which you have to counteract. Uh, using this uh, chieftain ascendancy, you actually don't need to, to uh, counteract that at all, making it a lot easier to reach 90 uh, with the less resources. So that's super cool. So because of that, we have to run purity of fire uh, because the main way we're getting max res is by scaling or effect with purity of fire. So uh, you get purity of fire to, to 23 and then that gives you, uh, with a bunch of war effect, gives you 90 auras. So uh, because of that, we are getting a bunch of fire res from the purity of fire, which again fed, feeds into why we need to use the overcapped fire res mod instead of the overcapped cold res mod, unfortunately. However, it's not actually that huge of a deal. Um, compared numbers, it's not massive. So, But you are losing, yes, it is a bit worse running this mod versus the cold res mod, but given everything else, I think it's definitely worthwhile doing. So let's explain why I like running Juggernaut versus running, let's say, I think the most popular other ones are Scion and Champion. I think most people do uh, Scion armor stackers. So Scion Iron armor stackers, basically at that point, you're it's basically just like a very standard or stacker shell. You, you spread out here and here and you get CI and you get um, clusters and down here and you get a cluster here. And the reason I really like Jug is because uh, you get this tr basically transcendence for free. So if you really want to be, if you want to match the tankiness of this character uh, with a Scion, you'd have to run the Timeless Jewel Keystone at Transcendence. And you would uh, do that and then convert all your fizz damage taken into elemental damage. And then you'd be absurdly tanky, obviously. However, uh, it's a lot of investment. First of all, it used up your your uh, Talmud's Keystone, which you can only have one of in your build unless you're running the Machination Shield. Uh, and so that's that's the cost. And then you have to convert pretty much all your Fizz damage taken into Elemental because Transcendence stops your armor from applying to Fizz damage. So you need some other way of mitigating that, uh, which usually is just converting all of it into Elemental damage. So this is a huge investment and you're sacrificing a lot to get that working, but it does result in a slightly tankier character than, uh, than the Juggernaut at super, super high investment. However, with Jug, you just get uh, the Transcendence effect for free and you don't need to to work around any downsides. So armor still applies to fizz damage, but you also get a portion of it applied to your elemental damage from hits. While we don't get all of our armor applied to it, uh, like Transcendence would give us, uh, it's still plenty to give you extreme tankiness. So uh, at a baseline, Juggernaut just starts off super tanky because of that reason. And then we also get access to another Timeless Keystone, which uh, especially this league is a huge deal because we can use a Supreme Ostentation, uh, which makes it so that we can convert every single travel node on our tree uh, into a tattoo. Two, and tattoos obviously let you scale or effect in this league. So you can basically see that I've replaced basically every single thing with either or effect or evasion and mostly or effect because uh generally that is one of the most powerful stats we can get. So that's one of the big reasons you can run Jug. Jug generally has a bit less damage uh, naturally than Scion because Scion has a really powerful damage uh, ascendancies versus Jug which uh, you know doesn't really have much in terms of damage for ascendancies. However with Jug you don't need to run Aegis really to get tanky unlike Scion where you kind of feel um, feel a bit attached to Aegis. That lets you run double replica Dream Feather to double up on the increased attack damage so that gives you a bit more juice that way. Also I just really like playing Jug because of the unstoppable Node you get. The action speed cannot be modified below base value mod, I find is just so nice to play with, especially when you're doing a lot of delirious content, which I almost always end up doing. Uh, so because of the abundance of the delirium hands that spawn on the ground and you walk over them and get, get slowed and yeah, Jug is just immune to that. So it's just like super uh, pleasant to play with. Um, yeah, I just really like Jug as an ascendancy and you get access to some of the cool stuff on the left side of the tree really easily as well. So that is the reason why I like running Jug over Scion. Now, a lot of other people who are running uh, armor stackers run Doyani's prototype as the chest piece. Uh, what Doyani's prototype does, and I'll put an image of it on screen here. So it sets enemies uh, lightning res to your lightning res, uh, 
and basically what you do then is you just get a bunch of minus lightning res on your character so that you just completely uh, destroy any lightning res on the enemies and that gives you a lot of damage uh, and then it makes it so that armor is applied to lightning damage taken from hits. The problem with this chest piece is that it makes you really vulnerable to lightning damage over time because uh, again the, your lightning res is going to be basically zero and the armor mod only applies to hits so your lightning damage over time it just goes straight through and just demolishes you which makes it so that every time you see a mana siphoner mod in a map uh, you get completely destroyed uh, which is the reason why I personally don't like uh, running this armor generally you do get a bit more damage out of it especially early on uh, without huge investment however I think it's just so much nicer running one of these um, armors increased by overcapped uh, fire res chests or invasion uh, chests you get slightly less damage out of it but you no longer have that weakness to lightning dots and you just get to be tanky against pretty much everything so I think it feels a lot better and also it's kind of fun being able to also scale fire res you can see that I have a bunch of fire res overcap because basically it turns fire res into damage for you which is kind of cool and while this specific chest is quite expensive to get the global defense mod and the armor overcap mod quite a rare combination for aggressive males uh, all you can do is you can just get a chest piece with just the overcap fire res mod and uh, skip out on the global defenses because it's not a huge deal the, the real important mod on this chest is the overcapped fires mod and getting a chest with just the overcapped fires mod is actually quite cheap so uh, you actually don't need to go super uh, super crazy on the investments uh, for that so otherwise uh, the, our damaging skill is smite uh, smite is a melee strike skill uh, that has an aoe component and a melee hit and when you hit a target with it it gives you a buff which grants you uh, lightning damage and attack speed now this buff counts as an aura and it gets scaled by aura effects so this is the reason why when you see spark or stackers or anything like that they use smite as a buff button because you get this a smite aura from it that gives you a bunch of lightning damage and that scales with your aura effect which you're already scaling so it's quite a powerful buff so um yeah we're just using it straight for damage which is really nice so we get that buff for free we don't need to press a buff button to get it um so yeah this is our damaging skill it's quite cool like many strike skills you can actually double dip on his damage so you see that the strike actually has two damage components it has a melee hit which is where this spear lands and it has an aoe that it shoots out alongside it so what you do is you use ancestral call as a support which gives you additional strikes and then you uh, basically basically target the enemy, you sort of aim a bit off from the enemy so that your hit hits the enemy with the area and then your ancestral call will hit with the actual strike skills that gives you two hits per uh, smite which gives you sort of it sort of gives you double damage pretty much which is pretty cool and very actually easy to uh, to execute a lot of strike skills can do this like you can do this with lightning strike and, and stuff like that as well so that's quite cool other stuff we, i'm doing with this build is i'm actually running heat shiver uh, so this is running a double cold brotherhood to convert our lightning damage into cold damage and then we are using heat shiver to give us that basically again double our damage because you get 100 of cold damage as extra fire now i think everyone knows how good heat shiver is uh, heat shiver is just an absurd helmet and this is like a, a, a really powerful setup to just get more damage now uh, the actual uh, end game version of like the mirror tier version of this build that I set up uh, will not use Heat Shiver or these rings uh, because uh, what you want to do is you want to get like a really good rare mirror tier uh, sort of plus gems helmets and then just two rare rings uh, which are really well crafted and then do that. Uh, it's a bit less damage but you get a lot more survivability and it just feels a lot better. However this is obviously very expensive and it's actually really cheap getting to Call the Brotherhoods and a Heat Shiver so uh, this is what I swapped to early on just to sort of make the build cheaper as I was building it. Obviously right now I have like these really strong corruptions like this this corruption on the heat shiver i snagged pretty early on so i got it uh, pretty cheaply but i know that this is going to be very expensive but you don't need this this corruption on the heat shiver at all you can just run a, a straight naked heat shiver and that's what i did for a long time as well and it's super fine so um yeah i'm using the cold converter which makes us freeze and gives us a bunch more damage which is very cool other uniques we actually have a lot of uniques right now in this version of the build um we are running much of the legion for our boots uh so this is uh, an interesting pair of boots it gives you socketed gems are supported by level 25 divine blood uh, which is the support that gave, makes your auras into a sort of temporary buff. You just press it every once every 11 seconds in order to keep it up so you don't need to reserve anything but it just costs a bit of mana to use. Um, the reason we stick our uh, grace in here is that the actual March of the Legion boots has a stat on it that says plus five to socketed aura gems and then you can get it corrupted to have either plus two or plus four uh, to socketed gems as well. Because again, as I explained earlier, uh, grace gives us so much armor on its own uh, we want to scale the gem level of grace as high as possible. So that's why armor stackers 
use more to the legion and then obviously we use uh, inspiration with our grace in order to make this a bit cheaper again you don't need to get a plus four pair like this i know they're very expensive one other really cool upside uh, with stacking armor is that we can make really good use out of the count spirits gloves so uh, count spirit gloves gives you that life recovery from your regen is not applied uh, but you get rage regen instead uh, from your life recovery rage is really powerful because just on its face rage gives you uh, attack speed and damage buffs which is really cool and then you can use berserk which is an incredibly powerful gem it gives you a more movement speed multiplier so it makes you really fast and it gives you more damage and more attack speed and less damage taken so it's a huge powerful buff however it consumes rage as you have it on at an exponentially faster rate so you can't ever keep it up permanently but the more life regen you have of the count spirit gloves the longer you can keep berserk up well now if you look at the length of our berserk if i just use it right now so you can see it's the the buff right here so you can see you can see what's happening here so it, it's going to be lasting for quite a long time like this is a single berserk you can see that i'm just going to pull my grace so it fills up it goes down i believe it's going to do it once more okay there you go so there it popped and then it's a four second cooldown and then you just pop it again and it's up for that long once again. So basically this is, I timed this and it's like around 16, 17 seconds and then the cooldown is 4 seconds. This means that uh, with this build we have 80% Berserk uptime, uh, which feels really good to use. Now how are we getting that? Because I'm actually not using Vitality, as you can see by my ours up here. So I'm not getting any life regen from that and I have basically no life regen from the tree. Um, so how we're getting this super high Berserk uptime is we're using this Evasion and Armor Mastery. Every 4 seconds regenerate life equal to 1% of your armor invasion rating over one second so obviously our armor invasion rating is like massive it's like in the millions so every four seconds uh, you get one second of just perma max rage pretty much no matter what and this alone without any regen like the only other source of regen i have right now on this build is are like these two nodes or i guess just this one node actually so i just have goals but nothing else so basically this mastery on its own gives you 80 percent berserk uptime with this build which feels really good and that's why if you look at when i pop berserk here you can see that berserk starts scaling down scaling down scaling down then the four second thing pops and it maxes out then it starts scaling down scaling down scaling down and then the four second one pops and yeah like it, it just you have so much berserk up time which makes you very fast and gives you a ton of movement speed a ton of dr and uh yeah having 80 percent berserk up time feels very very good for pretty much all content in the game so that was uh the main interaction that made me want to try armor stacking uh, last league and uh, it is still my favorite interaction uh, with this build in this league because having berserk up that much just feels fantastic as anyone who has made use of these count spirit gloves probably knows it, it just feels great and it, it's such a low investment it's just a mastery and and the pair of gloves because obviously you would probably take these nodes anyway right because 24 percent increase evasion and rating in armor is just really good for the build like you get a bunch of defenses and you get a bunch of damage from it so uh, it's basically just the cost of one mastery and it's just a really really nice quality of life and just a huge power spike as well so as for the passive tree uh you can see that we are like our stackers uh, <laughs> do as well the main core uh, way you're building this is you're using introspection clusters with mana reservation and you're just stacking a bunch of these to give you a ton of mana reservation and aura effect and you're using this to stack as many auras as possible while also uh, scaling all those auras so aura effect scales our grace determination gives you a bunch of damage and also scales all of our other auras uh, which we are running quite a few of so right now i'm running purity of elements uh, which is quite nice because it gives you both uh, res to, to cap your other resists and it gives you ailment immunity and it uh, scales your fire res which again because of our chest fire res is actually damaged so purity of element turns into sort of a damage aura which is kind of cool purity of fire again i explained this earlier gives you max fire res and a ton of virus for the armor mod which is very cool running discipline because you just get a bunch of free es we're actually not running almost any life nodes on the tree as you can see i have a <laughs> measly 2k life so without the discipline we actually have a very very small life pool but with discipline you get quite a bit of es so that's quite nice defiance banner again scales your armor invasion sort of like a lesser version of grace or determination but it's uh, still very strong haste just gives you attack cast and movement speed a very nice feeling sort of thing also gives you x to vol haste if you so wish which is a nice little button to press every once in a while and then uh, deter obviously gives you more armor we're running wrath uh, which grants you uh, lightning damage uh, again uh, wrath gives you uh, added flat lightning damage which is quite nice because uh, again we have so much percent increased damage from our weapons that any source of flat added lightning damage is actually quite big because it gets scaled by all this percentage so uh, wrath is a decent damaging aura uh, we also running hatred for more damage and then also running uh, precision to get some accuracy and crit strike chance and accuracy obviously is nice because it's uh, because we are jugs 
uh, accuracy actually scales our attack speed because of the undeniable node. So it is quite, quite good. So we are running those other things we are doing with the passive tree is I am using an impossible escape for CI that gives you access to this aura cluster right here and an additional curse from Whispers of Doom. It's quite strong. But that's a nice one to get. Also running uh, just a watch's eye. Watch's eyes are uh, pretty easy. The main line you want here is probably the energy shield per enemy hits uh, with discipline. And then you can just throw on some some damage taken as elemental, elemental mods uh, from pure developments of fire. Usually you can get at least one of these for pretty cheap. So actually the watch's eye isn't actually that big of a cost in this build. So it's kind of nice. Otherwise, we also running uh, this setup right here. So this is an interesting one you can do. Since we are a Marauder and Juggernaut, we have easy access to the left side of the tree. And there's a really nice spot here that we can make use out of our passive tree for. So what I'm talking about is using Elgin Hugh hubris alongside a massive thread of hope. So what is Elgin Hubris? Well, Elgin Hubris is a timeless jewel. Uh, it's works a bit differently than the other ones. What it does is that in, in its radius, it basically turns off all of these small passive nodes, but then Giga juices the big ones. So it has a bunch of powerful effects that it can turn these large notables into. See like here, you get 50 fire res, you can get like 12 spell suppression for a large node, you can get frenzy on hit for free from one of these. Uh, you can look over the wiki or whatever if you want to see all the mods, but they are very powerful. So this applies here, and if you, there are a couple of Elgin Hubris that work really well in this area. Um, so first of all, if you get an Elgin Hubris that commemorates Kaspiro, you see the first line right there, you get access to Supreme Ostentation. Now again, as I explained early on in this video, since we don't have to run Transcendence to get really tanky, uh, we get access to uh, another time of Keystone, and I chose to use Supreme Ostentation, which removes all your attribute requirements. This makes it so that you can basically replace all of the travel loans on your tree with tattoos. One of those things that you replace them with is aura effects. So uh, I looked at the POB of this character and this keystone alone gives you access to about 22 additional tattoos you can use pretty much. Uh, equivalents of stats you're gaining from being able to use this. So it's quite powerful. It's like either 22 aura effects or 22 reservation or you know anything you want to use it for and I really think Supreme Ostentation is very cool. Uh, but other than that you also get some really powerful effects from being in this spot. So um, the the seed I have on this Elgin Hubris is probably the best one I've been able to find so far. Uh, it, it gives you two 12% or effect nodes from these two uh, notables right here and it gives you another 12% up here. So that gives you a straight up 36% or effect which is extremely powerful for three nodes. And then it also turns this node into an 80% increased armor node which is like 6% six, 6% six ish damage for one single node and obviously a bunch of tankiness as well uh, which is very cool. So that's super strong and we use a massive thread of hope in order to get more of these nodes from this elegant hubris. So this is a very nice combination of two jewels where uh, suddenly you don't need to allocate all these small passives that the elegant hubris uh, disables. So you don't need to waste passive points on that. Uh, you can just grab this and this node for free with a thread of hope massive, which is a really efficient way of using these two jewels, I think. And it's very cool. So um, one of the advantages of being on this side of the tree, I think. And it's, um, yeah, it's quite a nice little interaction here. So here is the uh, POB which is also going to be linked in the description of my current character uh, and its stats. Obviously, you can see it's uh, it's quite juiced up. There's quite a lot of damage here, like a single hit from the uh, smite melee hit is 80 mil DPS, and then uh, uh, obviously you, you can, again, double hit with it quite easily. So I put it in the in the full DPS down here where you hit with both the melee hit and the area hit, which actually isn't very POB cheaty at all um, because it's uh, quite easy to do, honestly. It's a bit fiddly to not accidentally name lock the boss, but you get used to it, and it's, it's not that big of a deal, especially considering that you're so tanky with this build that you can sort of just stand wherever you want. So it's not that big of a deal. Otherwise, actually, I haven't POB cheated barely at all. Uh, I don't have Vol Haste on on this POB. I uh, don't have uh, Vol Smite on. Vol Smite has like a slightly more powerful buff uh, generally. Uh, you can see if I toggle it on and check it, you can see you get more, a bit more DPS, but uh, I, I don't have it toggled here for the sake of this. Uh, the only real cheaty thing, I guess, is that I have Molten Shell on. Uh, Molten Shell has a 50%, slightly more, it's like 52% or something uptime on this build, uh, because you are using uh, the skill effect duration quality, which gets scaled by your ashes, uh, so you get a bit more duration. But uh, yeah, you can toggle it off if you want. You can see that the build is still plenty tanky without it. I just... Um, <laughs> I, know, I, I like having it on, okay, and just <laughs> indulge me, okay. But otherwise, I think it's it's a pretty fair uh, setup. I'm assuming uh, power charges. We are running a crit on this build, so our two curses are uh, we are running uh, elemental weakness on hit from our gloves, and then we are getting assassin's mark mark on hit um, for our second curse, which gives us access to power charges. Uh, so we are uh, getting power charges from that pretty reliably. You actually don't have to run um, crit at all, and generally you can actually probably, in most cases, get more damage without running crit. Um, and the way you do that is you just path down here and you take elemental overload. You can see that me just taking right now ups my damage. So um, yeah, it's quite a good node, uh, but I, I ended up opting to go crit 
just because it uh, saves some passive points. And this passive tree is quite stalled for points. Maybe at some point when I get enough currency to upgrade my voices to one passives uh, and I gain those three passive points, maybe I'll go down and I'll go non-crit again because uh, you do get generally more damage from going non-crit with this build. Especially since uh, if you go non-crit, you can also swap up and has a mark for like another curse. You can go like Frostbite or something. And that's, that's quite strong. Uh, yeah, the, if you're wondering why I'm running so many Vol gems, you can see that I have False Mine, obviously, is, is a good Vol skill just to use for clear. Uh, very, very nice button to press. But yeah, you can see Vol Grace is a thing I have on a vol impurity of fire um, so I'm not actually using these vol skills it's just because that um, the items I have them in so you can see the count spirits here have plus two to level socket duration gems and my boots also have some plus two level socket duration gems uh, I got these corruptions a bit cheap because I guess people didn't realize maybe maybe the sellers didn't realize you can make your auras have the duration tag if you just make them into vol gems so that's the reason why I have uh, the vol gems right here because that gives them the duration tag and that makes them scale off of the gem levels on my items. Um, I'm not actually using those vol skills. So the, the big cost of that is that it takes the first time you're charging your vol skills up in a map or whatever, it takes a bit longer because it has to fill up. It, it gets split evenly between all your vol skills. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's fine after that since uh, uh, the ones you don't use just stay filled. But uh, yeah, so that's the reason why I'm doing that if you are curious. So as for flasks, we are running a Step Knight and Basalt to get the uh, more multipliers to our evasion and... Uh, armor obviously so that's a very good source of damage uh quicksilver because i pretty much always run a quicksilver with a major blood it seems uh <laughs> i don't know i just i'm never not gonna do it i'm not actually running this, the movement speed suffix though uh, because we are getting actually plenty of movement speed uh, without it you can see that uh, we have a 310 percent movement speed modifier right now which is assuming uh, onslaught and berserk but those are very easy to keep up with uh, this character so and again berserk has a 80 percent uptime on this character like n no cheating at all so uh, i think um it's fair enough to have that toggled. And then uh, I'm running a Ruby Flask minus Final Flask. So I'm using, uh, as the unique flask, I'm using Progenesis. Now you don't have to do this at all. Um, I'm just using this because it caps my Chaos Res. You can see if I don't have this on, I'm a bit below cap. Um, but uh, yeah, and then it's just a nice defensive flask. Obviously, it's very expensive. Uh, you don't have to do this at all. You can do like any other flask you want, and it's fine. You can run like a um, Taste of Hate or something, and it's fine. And then this Ruby Flask slot you can change out to, uh, like, what I would do probably is that, assuming you don't have all these clusters that I've slowly been amassing that have Chaos Res on them, which is where I'm getting most of my Chaos Res from, and you actually need Chaos Res, I would say just run an Amethyst here and do uh, do the Man Cross Craft on that, and that's plenty fine as well. And then obviously for the neck, we're running Ashes of Stars, it's pretty much uh, uh, a given with the sort of armor stacker, armor stacker builds that Ashes is just better than any other alternative, really gives you so much. A reservation. The skill gem quality scales a bunch of your stuff. Uh, it, like it defines better, gets scaled by it a lot, and you know the uh, determination does as well. And like, yeah, you're getting a lot of power out of um, ashes. So unfortunately, this is indeed an ashes build. And yeah, also another nice thing to see in this POB is you can see that my rage regen without this mastery accounted for is just 0.6. So it's basically nothing, right? It's literally just this note, I think. Yeah, it's just like um, <laughs> since you know how good this armor invasion mastery is for uh, for count spirits. One thing you actually can do. Uh, with the setup is what you can do is you can grab a rec recovery mastery so usually you'd probably grab these three nodes right here and then you'd grab this life recovery from regeneration is not applied and then every four seconds recover one life for every 0.1 life recovery per second from regen uh, what this does is since the life recovery from re regeneration is not applied it is the same wording as calm's gloves uh, it actually works alongside them so it w basically what this does is every four seconds all your life just refills instantly uh, so that's a way of getting around the fact that we have actual no life regen on our character uh, so that's kind of a nice thing you do. It's quite a big investment. It's four passive points. And again, my, my tree is really tight right now. So I ended up removing it and instead opting to use a singular uh, leech a tattoo. So this gives you 0.5% of attack damage leads to life. Uh, I found this to be plenty good enough to sustain our life in case we take any life damage. And then obviously we have the ES on hit from the Watcher's Eye um, to get uh, recovery that way to get our uh, ES up. So I found this com this combo to be uh, to be quite solid. So as for tattoos, I pretty much use our effect tattoos everywhere I can, except for a few points where I have, as you can see, the reservation tattoos. Ideally, you just do our effects on literally every single passive, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I need a bit of reservation from here. It's basically just like a give and take thing uh, where I alter it on the fly as I uh, keep developing the build. Uh, as for, I have some one-off tattoos as well. So again, I have the attack leech one up here, put it wherever. I just put it here because why not? Um, because uh, having one singular source of leech is really nice. And then I'm running a, a, a one of the owner tattoos. So the one I chose is the dex one, which gives you all sort of hit. Uh, you can also run the fortify on hit one. Fortify is actually quite nice. You can see if I just toggle fortify right now. Uh, 
you know you get you get quite tanky uh, but i mean this build is very very tanky already so I, it's probably not necessary but it is cool so you could do that if you manage to get all sort from somewhere else and then i also am running a loyalty tattoo so i'm using the uh, spirit of rakiata loyalty tattoo uh, this makes it so that when you crit a marked enemy and again we are using we are running crits and we are running assassin mark so uh, we have both of these uh, ticked uh, you summon this this NPC you now um Exactly. It's a bit annoying with these tattoos is that it's kind of cryptic what they actually do. Uh, but this is the only one I've noticed actually doing something. So what this one does is it basically gives you a 20% action speed buff when it's up, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, for mapping, it's actually not that huge of a deal. Uh, it's... Because it's it has an 80 second cooldown, it only triggers against marked unique enemies. So it's like you know what the map boss and like occasional deli bosses or something. So it's not actually happening that often in maps. It is nice for Sanctum though, which is something I've been running a lot of. Um, I think all the guards count as unique enemies, and the cooldown resets between Sanctum rooms. So this triggers every single Sanctum room and just gives you that 20% action speed buff, uh, which you definitely feel and uh, is quite fun. Uh, so I've been enjoying this loyalty tattoo. I don't think it's fantastic. Like if you're just doing mapping, I'll probably not not even use it. It's not that big of a deal but uh, it does uh, it is kind of fun and uh, yeah i just wanted to try it out it's, it's the only loyalty tattoo i've actually noticed uh, in gameplay which uh, also is quite cool but yeah that's uh <laughs> that's kind of an exhaustive look at everything that's going on with this character uh, i've really been enjoying it there's the added sort of um novelty of it to me that i i put a lot of it together myself usually i use like an established base for like horror stackers or whatever and just tweak it out of there but here since there are so few juggernaut horror stackers out there i've not been able to use this you know pretty much any pobs as a base for this and just sort of uh, freestyle a lot of it uh, which i found to be very cool you know i mean also it is just using established like armor stackers look very similar even this jug tree to let's say a champion tree or whatever so it's not like i'm some huge innovator or anything but i i'm just saying that it was fun for me to put together <laughs> um and it's very fun to play it's very fast very tanky uh, does a lot of that and smite is just a fun skill to use because you get access to vol smite which is an incredibly fun button to press like I, i've been pressing this in like 100 deli maps and it literally one shots like the bosses and stuff <laughs> it's, it's really funny um yeah it just feels great to press so yeah the build's really fun fast and uh, yeah it has a very high ceiling for scaling which is one of the the qualities i like in a build obviously if you've been following this channel uh, i like having builds that you can just sink hours and hours and currency and currency into which this build certainly has um as for upgrades i have a lot of upgrades is i could still do obviously i need to upgrade my voices these are still three passives this is going to be a long project because voices this league um they started off super expensive usually you have like a few you know a week or two of it being them being like 100 of each uh, these the spiked straight to 200 real quick, quickly this league so uh, it's going to take a while for me to to uh, be able to afford uh, one passive voices and all these sorts but eventually it'll happen and then we'll get three more passives to work with uh, which maybe we'll go elemental overload again or maybe i'll do something else with them i'm not sure yet um, but that'll be fun to do uh, also also, eventually, you, I'd want to probably move away from using Heat Shiver. I'd probably use, you know, one of those, you know, you, if you remember the, the plus gem levels helmet I crafted a couple of leagues ago, uh, you'd want to use something like that. And then uh, a rare ring and then probably a Kalondor's Touch to mirror the, the, the Giga rare ring. Um, and that'd be a cool little thing to use. So that's another long-term goal uh, to get. Also, I need to fix my stupid chest suffixes. Uh, <laughs> crafting these chests is really annoying because like the uh, the grasping male specific mod, so that always increased by Oak at Fire Res mod and the 51% or the and the 50% increased gold defense mod uh, that spawn on grasping males. Uh, you can't ever re-roll into them. So you have to basically just like keep them there forever, which means that the only real reliable way of crafting this chest is to just Eldritch Currency spam it. Like a basically Eldritch Chaos spam it for suffixes um so it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's not the most fun thing to craft but yeah i need to fix up the suffix on this chest because that dexterity obviously does nothing for me um but yeah lots of things to do still and it is very very cool as i said you actually do you can start doing armor stacking quite early on you don't need a mage blood you don't need barely anything really you can actually start quite cheaply and make a functional build it's not going to be as good like i would probably suggest uh, if you just want to play this build um to its highest potential i'd probably suggest starting out as something else like if you want to do the jug version you can start doing bone shatter first and then farm currency on that until you can swap over more majorly but you can do a budget version of the build uh, instead of uh, mage blood you can use string of servitude with like grace or effect on it you can use immortal flesh and uh, so be fine and then uh, the chest piece you just get a chest with just the overcat fires mod not global defenses these go right now for like a div each uh, so that's super fine not that big of a deal uh, obviously heat shiver and the call of the brotherhood rings are really cheap if you don't get them corrupted um, so you just get that instead of an ashes you could run the potentially like the eternal struggle amulet which is the amulet with two eldritch implicits so you get a copy of that that has or effect on it and you can probably do that instead of ashes and it'll be okay 
and those are usually quite cheap. Uh, you, you, these boots are really cheap if you don't get them plus four, uh, so you just do that. Uh, replica Dream Feathers are really cheap as well. Cow's Gloves, pretty cheap if you don't get the Elemental Weakness Corruption. Even just the Elemental Weakness Corruption generally isn't too expensive, so you can do that. Um, you don't need Progenesis, as I said earlier. Uh, just get an Amethyst Flask or something instead, and then just use whatever you want uh, in that slot. So uh, you can definitely get this up and running, and then you can just do, instead of the 35% increased effect on these mana clusters, uh, you can just go without that and just use straight in introspection and no increased effect, which makes them a lot cheaper. And uh, you can just do that. And I'll probably put a POB of this um, together uh, maybe in the next coming days or something and make a video of it. Uh, because uh, this is actually, a, you can totally do this on, on a relative budget. Obviously, you need a few a bit of currency, but uh, nowhere near. Like, you don't need a major value. You don't need any of this. So um, you can start it out on budget and, and be okay. It's not going to be fantastic, but it is going to be playable. And you can probably clear like same 30 or something on that build, I imagine. I'll maybe put that together and release a video of it in the future. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything uh, in the build right now. Uh, again, thank you everyone for watching and hopefully, uh, again, I know a lot of this stuff is super high end, uh, but hopefully maybe the interactions I've explained are interesting to you or something like that. Um, yeah, I, a lot of this stuff maybe isn't super approachable, but uh, as always, this is the sort of stuff I like doing in PoE, and this is more of uh, just, you know, I never treat these videos as sort of build guides, that's why I never name them build guides. Um, it's just sort of an overview of what I, what I do uh, in the game, so... Hopefully uh, that, that is something you enjoy watching and uh, yeah, more videos to come. All right, thank you.